Away, good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, it is start of a brand new week and here is the perfect morning show to keep you updated uh, with the biggest news uh, from India and around the globe. Let us start with the headlines. India will not back China's Belt and Road Initiative at the SCO summit, refuses to endorse the program in Qingdao Joint Declaration, says it cannot accept a project that ignores core concerns on sovereignty and territorial integrity. Six terrorists killed in infiltration attempt in Jammu and Kashmir's Zakaran sector. Patrolling intensified in the state. 18 militants killed so far along the LOC after government announced a Ramadan ceasefire. Home Ministry meeting today to discuss the jihadi content on social networking sites. Private sector pro professionals can become bureaucrats. Modi government offers a 10 to join secretary level post to non-civil servants. Centre says it wants outstanding individuals with expertise in various fields who are willing to contribute towards nation building. Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un arrive in Singapore ahead of their historic summit. North Korea says its leader will discuss permanent peacekeeping mechanism when they meet on Tuesday in the resort island of Sentosa. And Sunil Chetri scores twice as India beats Kimya to win International Intercontinental Cup in Mumbai. In tennis, Rafael Nadal lifts his 11th French Open title, beats a Dominic Thiem in straight sets for his 17th Grand Slam. Three short of Roger Federer's all-time men's record. Our top stories from China at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or the SCO Summit, which concluded on Sunday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with the heads of other member states, inked a number of agreements in Qingdao City. Now, with a prime focus on global terrorism and the need to counter it, SCO leaders signed the Qingdao Declaration and agreements on security, economic cooperation and people-to-people -people exchanges. India, however, did not sign China's One Belt, One Road initiative in the joint declaration. Here are all the details. Member nations of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization call for a unified global counter-terrorism front to fight terrorism, separatism and extremism. Without naming any terror group, the Qingdao Declaration said the member states strongly condemn all forms of terrorism and consider it necessary to make efforts to promote the creation of a unified global counter-terrorism front with a central coordinating role of the UN on the basis of international law without politicization or double standards. To strengthen the foundation for shared peace and security, we need to actively implement the 2019 to 2021 program of cooperation for combating terrorism, separatism and extremism, continue to conduct the peace mission and other joint counterterrorism exercises and enhance cooperation on defense security, law enforcement security and information security. We need to give full play to the role of the SCL Afghanistan contact group to facilitate peace and reconstruction in Afghanistan. India, however, refused to support China's One Belt, One Road project at the summit. The joint declaration issued at the end of the two-day summit featured names of all member nations except India endorsing China's Obor project. Prime Minister Modi in his address at SEO said that any mega-connectivity project must respect sovereignty and territorial integrity of countries. I don't think that uh, India's position is something that is not known to others. So I, I really don't see uh, India's position being uh, 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 coming as a surprise to anybody because this is not the first time India has articulated it. The Prime Minister has articulated it earlier uh, and it, has, it is a well-known position. The leaders also adopted a joint appeal to the youth, calling them not to get influenced by extremist ideologies.
a joint appeal by the heads of SCO member states for prevention of radicalization of youth, program of cooperation in combating terrorism, separatism and extremism for the years 2019 to 21, MOU within SCO in the field of MSMEs, joint statement by SCO members on trade facilitation, joint action plan in the field of tourism for the period 2019-2020. In the 22 documents signed, member nations agreed to enhance solidarity and coordination, deepen partnerships featuring peace, cooperation, equality, openness, inclusiveness and mutual benefit. The SCO was founded at a summit in Shanghai in 2001 by the presidents of Russia, China, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. India and Pakistan became its full members last year. This is Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called for connectivity, unity and respect for sovereignty among the members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In his plenary address, Prime Minister Modi also stressed on the importance of people-to-people -people contact between the member nations. Speaking at the plenary session of the 18th SCO Summit in Shrinda on Sunday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi stressed on the importance of regional security and outlined his vision through acronym SECURE. Samagara रूप से हमारे क्षेत्र को सिक्योर करने के लिए मेरे विचार से छह महत्वपूर्ण आयाम हैं। इनका संक्षिप्त रूप अंग्रेजी का शब्द सिक्योर यानी S E C U R E होता है। S से मेरा मतलब है security of our citizens e se mera matlab hai economic development for all c se connecting the region u se united our people r se respect for sovereignty and integrity e se environment protection main manta hu ki in dishaon mein sarthak sahyog se hi hamara sco सही मायनों में सेफ एंड कनेक्टेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बन सकेगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर आल्सो हाइलाइटेड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ लिंकिंग द रीजन विद ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉरिडोर्स एंड सेड कनेक्टिविटी डज नॉट ओनली मीन ज्योग्राफिकल लिंक बट इट शुड एंश्योर पीपल टू पीपल कांटेक्ट विदाउट नेमिंग चाइनास वन बेल्ट वन रोड प्रोजेक्ट PM stressed on the need for respecting the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the states in such projects एसयू क्षेत्र में हमारे पड़ोसियों के साथ कनेक्टिविटी भारत की प्राथमिकता है हम ऐसे नए कनेक्टिविटी प्रोजेक्ट का स्वागत करते हैं जो समावेशी सस्टेनेबल और पारदर्शी हो और जो देशों की संप्रभुता और क्षेत्रीय अखंडता का सम्मान करे इस क्षेत्र में कनेक्टिविटी के लिए हमारी प्रतिबद्धता इंटरनेशनल नॉर्थ साउथ ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉरिडोर चाबहार पोर्ट का विकास और अजगाबाद एग्रीमेंट जैसे विशिष्ट प्रोजेक्ट्स में हमारी सक्रिय सहभागिता में दिखाई देती है On the issue of terrorism, PM Modi referred to Afghanistan as an unfortunate example of the effects of terrorism and urged all member states to help the war ravaged country in rebuilding process. हम सबकी यह जिम्मेदारी है कि विगत में जिन कारणों से अफगानिस्तान की एकता अखंडता संप्रभुता विविधता और लोकतंत्र पर आंच आई है उन्हें न दोहराया जाए एस के तवधान तत्वाधान में अफगानिस्तान के लिए कॉन्टेक्ट ग्रुप में भारत सक्रिय भूमिका निभाएगा Prime Minister also stressed on the need for giving a boost to the tourism sector and announced that India will organize a SEO food festival and Buddhist festival. The 18th SEO summit is the first for India as a full-time member and apart from connectivity and security in the region, Prime Minister Modi also highlighted the need for enhanced cooperation amongst the SEO member states and setting up of time-bound goals and periodic review of their delivery for optimum utilization of the regional forum. With camera person Sudhan Shubhushan Shahu, this is Vishal Dahiya for Rajya Sabha TV in Qingtao, China.
All right, uh, my colleague Vishal Daya is now in fact joining us on the phone line from Qingdao. Uh, very good morning, Vishal. Uh, so Prime Minister Modi stressing on connectivity among uh, the SEO members yesterday. Uh, but, you know, India staying firm because it refused to endorse uh, China's OBOR project in uh, the declaration that was signed after the summit. Uh, what are the other key takeaways from the summit? Well, uh, you're right. Uh, that is uh, one uh, consistent stand which India has always taken. And uh, starting from uh, Prime Minister's uh, address at the plenary session yesterday, it was pretty much clear that India's focus would not only be on uh, uh, the regional security, uh, putting up a united front against uh, uh, terrorism, uh, but also on uh, connectivity. And when it comes to connectivity, the Prime Minister means no words when he pointed out clearly that uh, as far as connectivity is concerned, it cannot be just geographical connectivity between two nations or between two regions. It has to be also uh, a connect between uh, people, uh, people of uh, all, all, these, all these countries. And that is why the focus was on uh, various uh, means uh, through which other people to people connect can be enhanced. Uh, and that is why uh, that the, the suggestions are from uh, uh, the prime minister himself uh, in the plenary session, as well as later on, uh, was... Uh, to uh, put more focus uh, on uh, the cultural exchanges uh, between the countries. Uh, and there was this uh, you know, announcement from the Prime Minister that uh, on those lines only, uh, India will go ahead and later this year organize an SCO food festival and a Buddhist festival because that's the uh, shared cultural uh, uh, and religious heritage uh, um, between uh, all these nations. So clearly the focus here seems to be ensuring that uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the connectivity uh, between all these nations uh, and uh, the people-to-people -people exchanges gets a boost as far as the BRI is concerned. Yes, you're right. Uh, or OBOR, as it is known here in China. Uh, it, it, it's pretty much clear that uh, India has been uh, very consistent on its stand. Uh, the final uh, Qingdao declaration, uh, when it spoke about OBOR, uh, there was uh, uh, a mention of all member states except India clearly uh, an indication of uh, India's uh, stand on uh, this particular uh, uh, project. And uh, this was pointed out uh, by the Prime Minister in a wheel manner in his uh, speech as well. Uh, so it is pretty much clear that, uh, you know, as far as OBOR or uh, One Belt, One Road initiative of China is concerned, uh, the Indian side uh, do have uh, uh, reservations on this. Uh, and uh, the, India, uh, the Indian uh, representatives have time and again uh, pointed out that no project... Uh, and uh, this was something which was uh, put in so many words by the Prime Minister himself that no such connectivity project uh, would be able to uh, fulfill its objective if it does not uh, recognize and respect uh, the uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity of all the member states involved. So clearly, that's one point of disagreement here. But apart from that, uh, I think the major focus was more on uh, uh, putting up a united front against uh, terror and also in enhancing connectivity. So on those uh, fronts, it seems... Uh, that uh, this was uh, a very successful summit uh, and uh, being uh, the first one for India as a member state, uh, it holds a lot of uh, importance uh, for uh, right. India as well. Right, Vishal. Thank you so much uh, for all those updates there. So the SCO summit concludes with a, with a declaration at the end of the summit about India staying firm on the issue of OBOR project because India did not uh, uh, endorse uh, the OBOR project that was uh, in the declaration that was signed at the end of the summit. And before uh, leaving uh, from Delhi, Prime Minister, for Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held uh, bilateral talks uh, with the President of uh, Kazakhstan on the issues of mutual interest and asked him to join the International Solar Alliance. Now, the ISA is uh, the government's initiative that was announced in 2015 to work for efficient uh, exploitation of the solar energy to reduce dependence on fossil fuels. Uh, in the meeting with Kazakhstan, I think the focus, of course, was on, on the, you know, I mean, India's participation at the SCO plus uh, more on the bilateral side. And the sectors which were covered were, uh, you know, India's uh, India and Kazakh working together uh, in uh, hydrocarbon sector. Uh, there was some discussion also on how to facilitate visa and travel of people between the two countries. Uh, PM also thanked uh, uh, Kazakhstan president for their support uh, during the election of Justice Dalbir Bhandari. Uh, 
And um, I think some discussion also took place on how to uh, enhance the level of trade and investment uh, which uh, exists at this point of time. Uh, Kazakh president did mention that uh, compared to previous year, the trade has gone up by 50 percent, and that was an encouraging sign. And Prime Minister Modi also held bilateral talks with the leaders of uh, Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan on the sidelines of the SEO summit. He also shook hands with the Pakistan President uh, Mamnoon Hussain and exchanged pleasantries with him. And on Saturday, Prime Minister Modi held talks with the Chinese President Xi Jinping during which they agreed to continue efforts to ensure peace and tranquility along the border. And back home, six terrorists were killed after security forces foiled an infiltration bid along the line of control in Kopara's district of Jammu and Kashmir on Sunday. Now, army officials say that troops noticed suspicious movement in Kiran sector of Kopara district and challenged the infiltrators. He said that six terrorists were killed in the ensuing gunfight. Meanwhile, search operations are on in the area. This is the fourth infiltration bid since the center announced a Ramadan ceasefire on 16th of May and which has resulted in the death of 18 militants. Meanwhile, the Home Ministry will today hold a high-level meeting to discuss the removal of malicious content from various social networking sites posted by Keypad Jihadis. The meeting will be chaired by Union Home Secretary Rajiv Gauba and the meeting will discuss the implementation of the provisions of information technology on security agencies in dealing with the menace which includes the filing of FIRs, removal of the malicious content at the earliest. Keypad Jihadis reportedly spew venom on the internet with the intent to create a law and order situation by spreading rumours. On to the other top story of the day in its bid to attract talent from private sectors. The centre on Sunday invited applications for 10 joint secretary level posts in several departments through lateral entry. A circular was issued by the Department of Personal and Training and as per the criteria fixed by the government, the applicant must be of 40 years of age as of on 1st of July and a graduate from a recognized university. The posts for which the government has issued advertisements are revenue, financial services, economic affairs, agriculture, road transport, sh shipping, environment and forests, civil aviation and commerce. The selected individuals will be given a three-year contract extendable to five years based on their performance. The Joint Secretary post is usually filled through exams conducted by the UPSC. It is, I think, it's an endeavour to get the best from whichever source available. And Prime Minister Modi has led India on a path to, of development at a very rapid pace. And this is for the first time in the last three, four years, this number of path-breaking decisions have been have taken place in the in the area of governance. Like, for example, within three, four months of the government coming in, we did away with this age-old British legacy practice of getting certificates attested by the guested officers. We allowed the youth to do self-attestation of their documents while applying for higher posts. Or, then the, the interviews for the, uh, for the lower posts were abolished so that youth coming from any background could have a level playing field. So I think this is all motivated with the focus on, on allowing every citizen of India a fair chance to ensure his or her growth depending on his or her potential, her, his or her capability and also diligence. A news related to banks, uh, the Reserve Bank of India in a report has claimed that 18.5 lakh crore rupees currency has reached the public. RBI said that the currency is at a record high level that is almost double to 7.8 lakh crore rupees that it had post demonetization in 2016. The report added that the total currency of 19.3 lakh crores is in circulation by the RBI that is double to post demonetization's record 8.9 crore rupees. The total money supply described as uh, M3 by the RBI now stands at over 140 lakh crore rupees, which is nearly 11% higher than the year ago level. 
The M3 includes a currency with the public, a deposit money of the public and the time deposits with the banking system. It added that the report of money in circulation is recorded after deducting the cash with banks. Meanwhile, the cumulative loss of 19 government-run banks crossed a whopping 87,357 crore rupees in the 2017-18 fiscal as per the latest quarterly numbers posted by these lenders. Now, Punjab National Bank tops the list with a loss of nearly 12,283 crore rupees. The bank is reeling under over 14,000 crore rupees scam allegedly perpetrated by Nirav Modi and Associates. Out of the 21 state-owned banks, only two, that is Indian Bank and Vijaya Bank, posted profits during 2017-18. All 21 banks had together posted a net profit of 473.72 crore rupees in the 2016-17 fiscal. And the Election Commission is all set to hold the biennial elections to fill up with three vacancies in Rajya Sabha from Kerala. Well, today is the last day for filing of the nomination and the polling will take place on 21st of June. Kerala Congress has decided to field its leader Jose K. Mani as uh, the candidate of the Congress-led United Democratic Front for the Rajya Sabha election. And the CPIM has fielded senior leader Ila Maram Karim for the post, while former minister Binoy Viswam is contesting from the CPI. Three Rajya Sabha seats from Kerala are falling vacant on 1st of July. Now, those retiring includes Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman and the Senior Congress Leader PJ Kurian, CP Narayanan of the CPI and Joy Abraham of the Kerala Congress. And BJP President Amit Shah on Sunday addressed a rally in Ambikapur city of Chhattisgarh. Amit Shah targeted the Congress's uh, President uh, Rahul Gandhi, saying that the party is not answerable to his questioning of the work done in the four years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led government at the centre. Shah also asserted that, that the centre has always worked for the welfare of the poor and the downtrodden, adding that it had launched schemes and policies for them every 15 days. Now, challenging the Congress to win the upcoming Chhattisgarh Assembly elections later this year, Amit Shah further said that the BJP will retain power and will win 65 seats minimum. कभी जा नहीं सकता आरक्षण को भी कोई बदल नहीं सकता इस बार शादी विजय नहीं चलेगी 65 सीटों के साथ सरकार बनाने का काम भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने करना है एंड लेट्स गेट यू सम मोर नेशनल न्यूज़ लेट्स गो नेशन वाइड Voting in uh, Jayanagar Assembly constituency in Bengaluru will be held today. The elections were deferred due to the death of BJP candidate uh, B.N. Vijay Kumar. The counting uh, will be on 13th of June. The BJP has nominated B.N. Vijay Kumar's younger brother, B.N. Pralhad, as its candidate, who is pitted against uh, Soumya Reddy of the Congress Party, who is also being backed by the JDS. Sixteen people have been arrested in connection with the lynching of two men in Karbi Anglong district of Assam. Two men who were on a sightseeing trip in the area were lynched by villagers on Friday following rumours on the social media that they were child lifters. A magisterial inquiry has been ordered by the government. At least 13 people have died after heavy rain slashed to several parts of Kerala since the onset of monsoon. The Met Department has predicted a strong winds across coastal Karnataka in the next 24 hours as well. Fishermen have been warned not to venture into sea and Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan has asked the officials to be on alert and take utmost care. Results for the 2018 Joint Entrance Examination advanced for the admission to the IITs were announced on Sunday. Pranav Goel from Panchkula in Haryana secured the top rank, scoring 337 marks out of 360. More than 1,50,000 students had appeared for the examination this year, out of which 18,138 qualified. The seat allocation will begin from 15th of June. 
Our top international focus now, both North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump have arrived in Singapore ahead of their historic planned summit on Tuesday. The two leaders are staying in separate hotels not far from each other. They are to meet on Tuesday on Sentosa Island, where talks on denuclearization of North Korea in exchange for economic help will be on the table. And ahead of that meeting, North Korea said that their leader, Kim Jong-un, will discuss a permanent peacekeeping mechanism with Donald Trump. The U.S. wants North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons, but it is not clear what Pyongyang might want in return. The North Korean delegation to the talks includes Kim's uh, close aide, uh, Kim Chang Song, who is already in Singapore to prepare for the summit. And the U.S. delegation includes Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, National Security Advisor John Bolton and White House Chief of Start, Staff John Kelly. The Trump Kim summit will mark the first time a North Korean leader has met a sitting U.S. president. Meanwhile, the G7 summit ended in acrimony with U.S. President Donald Trump lashing out at host Canada and retracting his uh, endorsement of the joint statement. A war of words erupted between U.S. and its uh, G7 allies hours after the group had put on an apparent show of unity at the end of the summit. The summit was dominated by disagreements, notably over trade. In recent weeks, uh, trading partners of the U.S. have uh, criticized the new tariffs on steel and aluminum imports uh, imposed by the Trump administration. And after the meeting, Donald Trump also accused Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of acting meek and mild during meetings, only to attack the U.S. at a news conference. He tweeted that it, he acts hurt when called out. In a news conference after the summit, the Canadian leader had reasserted his opposition to the U.S. tariffs and had vowed to press ahead with the retaliatory moves on 1st of July. Germany's Angela Merkel said that Donald Trump's decision to reject a joint communique was uh, depressing. Let's get you all the sporting action now. Bangladesh beat six-time champions India by three wickets to lift their made in Asia Cup title in Kuala Lumpur yesterday. Winning the toss, Bangladesh sent India to bat first. The Indian batting lineup failed to live up to the expectations and regular wickets from Bangladesh denied India's progress. Captain Harman Preet Kaur scored a fighting 52 runs, which helped India put up 112 runs on board. And skipper Sunil Chetri scored another brace as India thrashed Kenya 2-0 to clinch the Intercontinental Cup at the Mumbai Football Arena on Sunday. India thumped their opponents as captain Chetri led the home team to victory. Kenya were unable to convert their chances into goals and they conceded two goals to the Chetri-led Blue Tigers. Chetri's double strike uh, capped a brilliant tournament which saw him score 8 out of India's 11 goals in the tournament. And in the French Open, uh, Rafael Nadal won his 11th uh, French Open title after beating 7 seed Dominic Thiem in straight sets at the Roland Garros men's singles finals. Despite being the only man to beat Nadal on clay in the past two years, rank number 8 Thiem failed to match his opponent's performance in the best of five. Nadal earned his 17th Grand Slam trophy, just three short of Ro Roger Federer's all-time men's record of 20. And in the women's singles, so world number one, Simona Halep won her first Grand Slam title after defeating U.S. champion Sloane Stephens on Saturday. And French duo Pierre Hughes Hibbert and Nicolas Mahout beat Oliver Marach and Mate Pavic to min win the men's doubles title. And in the women's double, doubles, Number six pairing of uh, Barbora Krechkova and Katrina Sinioka won their first Grand Slam title. And that's it from me and my team in this edition of uh, Breakfast News. Thanks for watching.